Now we saw how easy it was to access a service that's running within our own process. But services are not limited to just being used from the process where they're defined. Right? Services really are intended as a centralized way to perform long-running operations. And so it's really important, again, that we avoid thinking of services as being threads. Right? It's, a service is an Android component type, and it's accessible in, many, in the many different ways Android component types are. Threads are just something the service uses to do its job. The key thing is, is that it's about providing these background processing capabilities. And when you define a service, that service runs within the process where it's defined, but it's not limited to being used by that process. It can, of course, be used by other components in the process, as we saw in that last demo, but it can also be accessed from components in other processes. And in fact, one service can be handling requests from many different processes at the same time. Some of those requests coming from inside of its own process, so those requests coming from components in other processes. Now the thing we have to consider though is that how do we actually make a service visible to other processes? Remember that when we were accessing the service in our last uh, demo, we were actually passing the component type. So we're really defining kind of the class, or I should say, we we're specifying the class where it's constructed. So you're inside the same process, so that process could look at it and go, okay, I've already got that type inside this package. I can go ahead and create it. Services are intended, though, as a late binding mechanism, meaning that in order for an application to use it, it doesn't actually have to have the type bound into that application. Right? As a result, if the component that's using the service doesn't really know anything about the component type that implements the service, we can't use an intent that just specifies that class. We've got to come up with some more uh, better like late binding mechanism. Right? And that's where intents come in. Right? Really, if you look at what intents are in Android, I mean, it does, they do many different things, but much of their usage is about late binding, right? defining things you want to use that were not necessarily bound into your application. So what happens then is that in order for your service to be visible to other processes, when you define it inside of your manifest, you have to define an intent filter. In other words, you have to identify that these are the late binding messages, right, the intents, that this service knows how to handle. And all the different ways that you can define intents are supported. Most commonly, you'll define some kind of action test, right? You'll define the action that's associated with that intent. But if you're familiar with intents, you know there's also category tests that can be in place, there are data tests that can be in place. You can use any of those mechanisms. And a service can actually have multiple intent filters defined. Right, so if you've, if you've built a single service that actually knows how to do four or five, six different things, right, you can actually have four or five, six different intent filters defined. Now, when it comes to accessing that service, it becomes a responsibility of the component that wants to call the service to basically create an intent that matches the filter. So basically, if you know what the intent filter defined for the service is, then again, that's going to be something like an action test, then the component that's going to call the service when it creates the intent, instead of specifying the component type, basically sets the appropriate action or other factors on that intent that are required for the service to see it. 